If you follow an exercise program, then you will be familiar with using your heart rate as a way of monitoring your exercise intensity. But what should it be? Find out in this video. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I will teach you how you can determine what your heart rate should be during exercise. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. Many people now have wearable devices such as a smartwatch or the more ECG accurate heart rate monitors with the chest strap that can tell them their heart rate during exercise. And some modern cardio machines in the gym even have their own pulse monitors on the handles. So tracking your heart rate during exercise is something we are advised to do. If you don't have the tech to check your heart rate though, you can do it the old school way and take your pulse to know what your heart rate is at any given moment by gently palpating your index and middle fingers on the underside of the wrist near the base of the thumb where your radial artery is located or on one side of the neck, just under your jawline, next to the windpipe, where your carotid artery is located. Once you have found the pulse, you can then count the beats for a 30 second period and then multiply this number by two to get your heart beats per minute. It's worth knowing that like your blood pressure, your heart rate will fluctuate depending on your environment, level of stimulation, stress or activity, and even chemical changes in the body. If you have an arrhythmia, irregular heartbeat, or atrial fibrillation, then your pulse won't necessarily be consistent and may be a little bit erratic. But what is a normal heart rate? Well, generally, if you're at rest, your heart rate will be between 60 and 100 beats per minute. If you're very fit or you take a beta blocker medication such as atenolol, propranolol, or bisoprolol for your blood pressure, anxiety, or heart condition, then you may see your heart rate at rest between 40 and 60 beats per minute. This is known as bradycardia. If your heart rate at rest is consistently above 100 beats per minute though, known as tachycardia, then it's worth checking with your doctor to see if there is any underlying cause for it. When determining what your exercise heart rate should be though, this can be a little bit more complicated to work out because your age, your health, your rest and heart rate, your exercise goal and your medications will all influence what your heart rate will be. I'm also going to point out that although there have been multiple studies on target heart rates, no recommendation is 100% accurate for everyone. So please use this information as a guide and not as an absolute rule. And I apologize in advance because there is a bit of math involved in the next part of the video, but I'll try and keep it straightforward so you can follow along. First of all, you need to determine your theoretical maximum heart rate. The most accurate way of doing this is conducting a VO2 max test in a clinical setting, but this isn't going to be possible for 99% of the people watching this. So if you're generally active with no heart conditions, then using the more modern equation by Lack et al. in 2021 of 202.5 minus 0.53 multiplied by your age will give you the closest accuracy for a wide age range. So for me, age 47, this will be 202.5 minus 24.9, which gives me a maximum heart rate of 178 beats per minute rounded up. If you have a heart condition or are very sedentary, so new to exercise, then using the simple 220 minus your age will be an easier and more conservative way to determine your maximum. It's worth noting that if you are on a beta blocker medication, you will need to reduce your result from either equation by a further 30 beats per minute, as this medication suppresses your heart rate all the time. There is a third formula for those that have diagnosed heart failure, but I would always recommend a cardiologist or clinical cardiac nurse to advise what will be best for this client group on an individual basis. Once you have your maximum heart rate number, you then need to find your rest and heart rate. To do this, take your pulse, as I mentioned earlier in the video, on the wrist or on the neck, or using your smartwatch, but only after you've been sat down at rest in a quiet place for 10 to 15 minutes. Although your true rest and heart rate will be when you are sleeping, this method will give you a close representation of what your rest and heart rate is. When I did this, my rest and heart rate was 58 beats per minute. So now you have two numbers, a maximum heart rate and a rest and heart rate. 
You will need these two numbers to find your heart rate reserve, which is calculated by subtracting your rest and heart rate number from your maximum heart rate number. So for me, this is 178 minus 58, which gives a heart rate reserve of 120 beats per minute. The next step is to determine your level of intensity that you will exercise at, which will be based on your goal. As a guide, I've done a table of typical goals and their relevant percentages that you'll need to add into the Carvonen formula to work out your exercise heart rate zone. If you regularly perform activities of daily living around the home, in the garden, at work, or when you're out and about, then doing these light physical activities, working at around 30 to 40% of your heart rate reserve will improve your health. In addition, just this week in the news, some research led by Dr. Soren Brage said that conducting 11 minutes of daily activity where you feel yourself moving, elevating the heart rate, but not necessarily feeling out of breath, can prevent one in 10 premature deaths, reducing the risk of heart disease, stroke, and cancers. If you suffer with a respiratory condition, then it's probably best not to even use the heart rate as a measure of your intensity, as you will be breathless at a lower heart rate. So instead, use the rate of perceived exertion, or RPE scale, of zero to 10 to monitor how hard you feel that you're working and aim for a three to a four on this scale. This RPE scale is another method that you can use alongside tracking heart rates that's just as useful to monitor your exercise intensity and very much advised for people with chronic health conditions. If you have a heart condition or have undergone a cardiac event such as a heart attack, then the percentage points to use in the formula will be 40 and 70% to safely strengthen your heart muscle. However, I would always recommend that people with heart conditions take individual advice from their cardiologist or cardiac rehab team, and also use the rate of perceived exertion scale of zero to 10 to monitor their exercise intensity and stay within a four to a six on this scale. If your aim is to lose weight, shape up, or improve your general fitness, which will be for the largest proportion of people, then 50 and 70% will be your two points to add into the formula working aerobically. This moderate intensity is also good for maintaining muscle density and is generally manageable for most people, even if they're not used to exercise, so will be a good start point for beginners. It's also the intensity that will burn a higher percentage of fat from the energy being used and could comfortably be sustained for more than 30 minutes. If you're training for an event or sport that requires a greater degree of cardiovascular fitness and endurance, then you'll need to regularly exercise in 70 to 80% of your heart rate reserve. This will be where you utilize both the aerobic and anaerobic energy systems, which greatly improves fitness, pushing your lactate threshold. This vigorous intensity will feel difficult to maintain though for up to 30 minutes. If you're training for a competition that demands a high degree of fitness and conditioning that can include sprints or other explosive or short burst movements, then you'll need to add some anaerobic training into your weekly sessions. You won't be able to sustain this for long, so it will involve an interval-based program with frequent rest periods to obtain the high quality of performance required. This will push your heart rate up to between 80 and 90% of your heart rate reserve for short periods of only one to two minutes. The VO2 max level of above 90% of your heart rate reserve is only really used for clinical assessment conditions or fitness testing and wouldn't be used as a regular form of training, although elite athletes will push their heart rate up to the maximum during competitive play for less than one minute. It's worth pointing out that these percentages aren't absolute because everyone's heart rate responds differently to a certain level of work, so treat this as a guide to the exercise intensity that will be experienced. In addition, how the exercise feels at different heart rate levels will also vary from person to person. A fit individual will have to work harder to get their heart rate up higher and won't perceive the exercise to be as difficult as someone who is less conditioned. The fitter person's heart rate will also drop much faster after stopping the exercise too. So let's now use what we know to work out my target heart rate for an example. If my goal is to lose a bit of weight and improve my overall fitness, I will use the 50 and 70 percentage points in the following Carvonen formula. I start with my heart rate reserve number of 120, calculated earlier using my maximum and rest in heart rates, and multiply that by my chosen percentage point, and then add back in my rest in heart rate of 58. So using the 50 and 70 percentage points, 
you can see that this works out at 118 beats per minute on the lower end of the zone and 142 beats per minute on the upper end of the zone. If on another exercise session, I wanted to work harder to really develop my cardiovascular fitness, then I would use 70 and 80 as the percentage points in the equation. This would be a target heart rate zone of 142 beats per minute up to 154 beats per minute. Hopefully this makes a bit of sense and you can use this information to work out your own target heart rate zone. I've done a summary sheet which I'll put up on screen now, which has all the information on it that you will need to work out your own target heart rate zone. So if you want to pause the video to take a screenshot of it for your reference, then you can do that now. Remember that this is only a guide and not intended to be a 100% accurate way of finding what your heart rate should be. But if you closely monitor your heart rate during exercise after working out your target heart rate zone, you will start to learn whether any adjustment to it is required. This does also change over time, as 20 years ago, I could regularly get my heart rate during training above 190 beats per minute, whereas now I feel like I'm pushing it really hard if it goes above 170. I hope the information provided in this video though has given you some helpful guidance for monitoring your exercise intensity. If so, then please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.